Hi, it's Bruce. It's Sunday, July 24th, 2011, and it's been a while. I've been away and uh, around and about. Uh, Bill and I went to Spearfish, South Dakota for uh, about nine days. At his hometown, he was doing a show at the Matthews Opera House. Yes, they have an opera house in Spearfish, and it's very nice. Spearfish is a wonderful town. It's uh, in the Black Hills. It's near Mount Rushmore, uh, Devil's Tower. It's a fabulous place, and the people are great. Um, Bill had two shows at the Matthews Opera House, and they were the gayest shows Spearfish, or maybe even South Dakota, have ever seen. He uh, has uh, local talent, uh, which is plentiful, uh, singing the songs from his shows, and he talks about uh, different things about his life and uh, uh, how he wrote different shows and stuff. And uh, he did, did it for a benefit for uh, children's uh, theater there at the Mandy's Opera House. Anyway, while we were there, we did see some theater. The, um, we saw the uh, Spearfish Arts Center do a production of uh, the amateur talent there of the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee by William Finn, directed by the wonderful Dennis Gleason. And I got to meet the director and I got to meet everyone. And uh, we were having lunch with a bunch of people and uh, one of our hosts, Jim Hood, uh, was talking about me to Dennis and said, uh, Bruce does some video blogs. And Dennis like looked at me and said, I've seen you on your video blogs. So hi Dennis, he actually watches, so it was, yeah, it was fun. Uh, two degrees of separation. Okay, uh, actually Spelling Bee was fun, Dennis directed it very well, and I have to say I made friends, or I got to meet everybody in the cast over those nine days. So I want to say hi to Molly, Michelle, Connie, Joe, uh, uh, Kale, he spells it funny. Uh, hi, Michael, especially Michael. Uh, Stephanie and Lisa, especially, especially Lisa too. Jim Hood. Jim Hood was our host with his lovely wife Katie and put us up in their beautiful home. So hi, Jim and Sean Sutton, uh, who also uh, many of these people were in Bill's uh, show also. So they were doing double duty of doing spelling bee and finishing that up and rehearsing and doing Bill's show. Great time in Spearfish. Okay, on to, back to New York. We went to see a strange and separate people by uh, John Morantz, who wrote uh, The Temperamentals and, uh, other, and other shows. And we, this was directed by Jeff Calhoun. Uh, stars Jonathan Hammond, Tricia Paluccio, and Noah Weisberg. And especially a shout out to Jonathan Hammond, who is a phenomenal actor, phenomenal singer, and he actually gets to sing in this. It's a little, uh, little Orthodox Jewish cantering over Shabbat dinner. So um, this is actually a very good play. Uh, it is a very niche thing. It's uh, about Orthodox Jews and gays, or gay Orthodox Jews, or the mixing of gays and Orthodox and accepting your religion, uh, having the two, uh, it, and then other layers. It, uh, it, it reminded me just slightly of uh, Next Fall, about the Jewish guy and the fundamentalist Christian getting together. This is about two Orthodox Jewish men getting together. And uh, it's really dramatic, it's really well written, it's really thought provoking. It's a limited engagement there uh, on Theater Row uh, in a, the, uh, I think it's just called the Studio Theater there in, uh, uh, in that complex in Theater Row. Uh, I think it probably will move. It, it was really good. So, uh, Jonathan Hamming gives a great performance along with Noah Weisberg and Tricia Paluccio in a trio that shifts and turns and uh, takes you places you didn't know and you've never been. I know I've never been. All right, now, 
Our second attempt to see Death Takes a Holiday was uh, yesterday. I, if you watch the blog, you know that we went to see Death Takes a Holiday at a preview and it wasn't running because the leading lady was sick and it had just started previews and they didn't have the understudy, was sick or wasn't ready, I'm not sure. So I really wanted to see Death Takes a Holiday, music by Maury Yeston, music and lyrics by Maury Yeston, because of a young a British actor, singer named Julian Ovenden. That's one of the reasons I wanted to see it since I first heard about it. Guess who wasn't in it yesterday? He's been out, I think, since about Thursday. I guess he's got laryngitis. I didn't see Julian Ovenden. But we went anyway. Kevin Early was the understudy. Uh, also in the cast, Matt Cavanaugh, Rebecca Luker, uh, Jill Pace, Michael Sibbery, Max von Essen. So it's not chopped liver, so I didn't want to like miss it and just try to see it again. So I just thought, I'll just go. Kevin Early is a beautiful voice. I think I might be missing something that Julian Ovenden brings to it. I almost want to go back, except that I have mixed feelings about the show. Uh, I love the source material, Love Takes, Death Takes a Holiday. I love a lot of Maury Essence music. The subject matter, which is, uh, if you know, Death, Death goes to claim uh, a young woman who's uh, thrown from a car and uh, is so taken in all these millennia of him taking dead bodies that he just can't take her and instead decides to take a holiday from picking up dead people and move into this palazzo that she lives in and, uh, and see what life is all about and why people want to live. What, what, what is life, what is yearning, what is love. It's a wonderful uh, story and uh, Kevin Early is, is quite good but uh, really I think he was missing some, something a little bit more sex appealing than maybe Julian brings. Not that he's... Alright, I'm sorry. I, I just... I think I really wanted to see Julia. The, the, there are quite a few too many ballads in the show, but it lends itself to ballads. And a lot of the music's beautiful. I especially was taken by Rebecca Luker, who I've had the pleasure to meet and know a little bit. But my favorite moment was Rebecca Luker singing uh, Losing Roberto uh, about her uh, having lost her son. And she has, she's the Barbara Cook of our day. Uh, anyway, I enjoyed it, but with reservations. And I don't know if I enjoyed it enough that I'd want to go back and sit through the whole thing to see Julian open down. I just wanted to see him. All right. Today, I had a very special day. We went to the Lincoln Center Summer Festival where they were doing a, a, a Japanese play in Japanese, with supertitles, called The Temple of the Golden Pavilion, which is based on a novel by Yukio Mishima, who committed suicide in 1970. This is an intense three-hour Japanese drama. Uh, the reason we went was because uh, the director, Amon Miyamoto, directed a show that Bill and Henry Krieger wrote called Up in the Air, based on a Japanese tale called a boon of the tree climbing frog, and they turned it into a musical for the Kennedy Center called Up in the Air, and that's before the George Clooney movie Up in the Air. I have to say that this was spellbinding, and Amon, as a director, is like one of the most fabulous world-class directors I've had the joy to meet and uh, to watch his work. This was a stunning piece of art. Uh, about a young man uh, with a stutter who uh, is uh, sort of torn apart uh, from his inside feelings and his outside feelings and uh, the loss of his father who told him that the Temple of the Golden Pavilion was all that you could, it was happiness and, and if you just concentrate on the Temple of the Golden Pavilion where he's finally sent after his father dies to be raised by priests there to become a priest and uh, the happiness and uh, and uh, emotional uh, things that tear him apart through his journey at the Temple of the Golden Pavilion. 
brilliantly directed by Amon Miyamoto. And uh, as I said, I'm just so happy that I, I have met him and, I, and I've known him. Uh, between uh, starting this interview with Dennis Gleason and ending with uh, Amon Miyamoto, I'm really lucky to know so many and meet so many wonderful people in the theater. Uh, Sort of a mishmash today, a little bit of everything, but I hope you enjoyed and I will see you as soon as the theater season kicks up.